Hi, I'm Bob Drummond, co-founder of Cami, a digital classroom application. I want to talk today about the digital transformation that's taking place in education right now. Now, I'm not an educator, I'm an engineer, but that means I've spent my whole life learning and relearning new skills, technologies, media and knowledge. And in the 21st century, this is going to apply to everyone in every industry. This is the world we need to prepare our kids for. Above all else, CAMI is meeting teachers' needs for flexibility at a challenging time. As school closures increase due to the coronavirus outbreak, more educators are planning and preparing ways to implement remote learning for their students. We want to help. If you're looking for universally accessible tools to learn, create, and collaborate, there's Kami. To get started, open a file from Google Drive, upload one from your computer, or create a blank page. Create assignments and lessons for any subject using a variety of interactive tools. Leave instructions or video lessons to guide students through their work. Send assignments out to your students by sharing a link or through learning management systems. Kami works seamlessly with Google Classroom, Schoology, and Canvas, where you can create assignments, mark up, and grade using Kami tools. Students can express themselves however they'd like using a range of tools to complete their work. Students can collaborate in real time with their classmates on any shared file, drawing conclusions as a team and supporting one another. Teachable moments can happen at any time, so be there with your students to check on progress, answer questions, and intervene. When all is said and done, have your students submit their work for you to mark up and grade in Kami. At Kami, we have a vision to connect learners and make education accessible for everyone, both in the classroom and beyond. Our collaborative learning software is helping to meet the needs of students and educators as they move towards a more flexible future of learning. With Kami, every teaching resource you already use can be brought to life as an online canvas for creative expression or critical analysis, or as an interactive platform for insight and collaborative learning. When I push out an assignment to the students, they then also can utilize all of those um, features, whether it's a math performance task or language arts. They can watch me annotate, highlight, um, make diagrams, and then they in turn are able to do some of the same things. It seems like having Cami on my mobile device is like having my desk go wherever I am in the room. The classroom is overdue a makeover. In 2019, when we could still visit classrooms, we did, in many countries. Many classrooms would not look unfamiliar to a teacher from 1919. Just replace the projector or screen with a blackboard and they'd probably feel right at home. Education has forgone a digital transformation for longer than any other form of human endeavor. 10% of the average school budget is still spent printing and photocopying as teachers convert digital resources for an analog classroom. It's a $7 billion cost per year in the US alone. COVID-19 is both accelerating and disguising a transformation. In 2020, teachers around the world are coping with a pandemic at the same time as a fundamental shift in the way we will learn is underway. So buckle up, it's going to be a time of unprecedented upheaval. When we come out of this crisis, it's going to be one of the most profound periods of creative disruption in education ever. No teacher, no school, no university will be left untouched. The first one was easy. The first guy who called and said, can you get my school live by Monday? Our school's been shut down. Uh, yeah, no problem. After this, um, one teacher in Hong Kong had posted his blog um, talking about what we'd done for them. Uh, we were inundated with requests from hundreds of schools the following week wanting to get on the same program. Once it spread to the US, our core market, we were um, 
yeah, we were more concerned. We said to everybody, look, the founders have got together and we've reviewed it, COVID is happening in the US. We're just going to announce that Cami is free. We knew that once we were offering free licenses that sales were going to start drying up. So many schools that needed a solution overnight, they didn't even have the time to go and talk to anyone about what the rollout would be like. They just wanted something to work and we were blanket giving it away. And all of these is not driven by be successful at the end. It's more like we got to do this because people are relying on us. The reactions from our users congratulating us for the tool we built that made their lives easier, that, that helped them address the massive challenge of remote learning in COVID times. I've been also inspired by what our team has been able to achieve. A massive, um, a massive thank you is owed to, to our team that have kept this, kept this going right up to where we are now, supporting these 18 million users. We don't tell teachers the future, we listen to them. And they tell us this. Number one, post-COVID, education is not going back to normal. Secondly, this time, it isn't a change being forced on educators, it's change being led by them. So where is this transformation leading? At Kami, we've seen explosive growth to now 20 million users across 180 countries. Teachers and students around the world are using Kami in every lesson, every day, in the classroom and remotely. So let's look at some of our observations on the direction of change and the most significant trends that educators have highlighted to us this year. Firstly, Technology needs to help teachers teach. Teachers are under severe stress this year, but their goal is still always to help their students to learn, all their students. So let's make the tools that have the most impact on learning easy for them to use. That's what Cami's doing. We listen and we try to give teachers what they need, what their students need, and we make it ridiculously easy for them and their kids to use. You know, when you've just been doing pencil and paper for so many years, it just gets it to the next level where they feel a little bit more excited about their, their learning. But I feel like also it's allowing them to share their work too, because you know, if I have a student that's worked out a problem, I can say, hey, share your device. And if they've just worked a problem out on Cami, then I can then share it to the screen up here with Chromecast, and then they're sharing what they just did and worked out so I can then show the whole class. It almost made them become more engaged in the lesson because they wanted to be that one to, to solve it. If they're excited with what they're using, they're doing something different, they're just going to be more engaged. And I think engagement in your lessons are, are huge. Secondly, the teacher's role has been evolving. The traditional role of a teacher as the gatekeeper to knowledge was being eroded long before the pandemic hit. What new information could you possibly reveal in your lesson when a device in each student's pocket gives them access to all of the information collected by mankind in the last 10,000 years. So the teacher is increasingly a guide. For students today, accessing knowledge is easy, but applying it is still hard. Learning skills is hard. Teachers have learned to guide students as they discover knowledge, verify the accuracy of what they find, analyze information to gain new insights, learn skills, and develop their creative talents. Fourthly, digital technology can distort time and space. The classroom has been the place where learning happens, but in 2020, the pandemic blew the doors off the classroom. Visionary educators are seeing what could be possible when technology is ubiquitous and learning is not restricted to a specific time and a physical location. Now that educators have had a glimpse of the potential, these new learning methods and technologies are not going back in the box. Being a Cami Hero has put me in touch with so many different facets of Cami and meeting so many different people. I've been invited to uh, you know, work your booth at a couple of different tech conferences and that's been great. What I get most out of working with other Kami heroes is hearing their stories. It's, it's always so refreshing to hear 
other people's good stories as well. When I was talking to teachers and they would say to me, this is what I'm looking for, you know, the, the light bulb will go on in my head, like, oh, oh yeah, Cami had this great tool. And then I was excited to tell them, oh yeah, this is what Cami can do, this is how you can use it. And then it was exciting to come back to my classroom after that conference and be like, okay, kids, this is what we're doing today. Because Mrs. Nation forgot we could do this, so we're gonna do it today. And then they were like, okay, she's excited. Mrs. Nation's excited. <laughs> that collegiality of just like sharing your stories and sharing what you do sharing how you use it in a special ed classroom, sharing how you use it in, with um, English learners. Those are all great things we're, we're constantly needing to up our game, so that's great to have that, that, that community. This digital transformation is not about replacing the classroom. The US Department of Education studied how students learn online versus face-to-face. Their researchers concluded that taking a face-to-face -face lesson and replicating it online rarely led to benefits. Instead, improvement came from using digital to enhance the learning experience and to extend the learning environment. So the classroom will remain the hub of learning. The classroom will continue to be that primary location for the nurturing of young and evolving minds. It's more than just a place to pick up knowledge. Students learn teamwork, leadership, presentation, persuasion, empathy, collaboration, conflict resolution, compromise, and creativity. But it's no longer the only place where learning happens. These technologies can enhance learning for all. They bring the flexibility to tailor the learning experience for each student in their own individual situation and capabilities. They enable students to engage with learning resources with their classmates and teachers at their own pace and place and using their preferred medium, keyboard, stylus, touchscreen, chat, voice, video, real-time or asynchronous technologies, providing the flexibility for blending classroom and online learning. So my name is Debbie Lance. I we're here at Sayo High School, School of Extended Educational Options. We are an independent studies high school, which means that um, we do not have very little direct instruction with our students. We have a, two appointments with them a week, and then um, their in-person time with us. We're going to be kind of supplementing their learning from what they're working on. But so there's a high amount of independence that's going on, and so. We need um, built-in learning interventions. It's my favorite way to annotate text. Because, and that this is important where my own research I've kind of come across this, is that people are not, we don't read things on paper anymore. We read, you know, sometimes paper is nice and sometimes we're going to read it on paper, but for the vast majority of, of all the other cases, um, it's going to be digitally. And we need, you know, a way to interact with that text digitally. And I need an interface that permits me to interact it with it in a kinesthetic way that's useful for my, you know, that supports learning. So, and I use myself as an example. I'm a, res you know, reasonably capable you know, college-educated person, but my students who are at a very different academic level, um, if I need this kind of support, then I can. Um, you know, easily recognize that my students would benefit from it. I enjoy grading work from students that is their authentic voice. So um, I think that in public schools we have a lot of assignments that are, that require our students to regurgitate nonsense. So, um, uh, you know, when I get to see students that have been actually have some sort, I don't even care what type, but any sort of like an emotional response to what they're engaging in, that's like exciting to me. And I, and I, you know, and I'm interested to read, I'm interested to see what their comments are, what their feedback is and such like that. Um, really good so far, yeah. Um, so I've had really positive reactions. Students have kind of given me the, um, the green light that I needed, the confirmation that this is, this is working well. They like it, it's working well. You know, that is evidence for because my students have been confirming that for me. But a second digital divide is now with us. We all see how the ability to understand and apply new technologies 
is becoming a differentiator in every job, in every industry, in every country. Suddenly, in 2020, students are now being forced to use digital technologies in order to get their education. Now, more students are becoming deeply fluent in applying digital technology. How much more adept are they going to be at remote working? At CAMI, we try to help schools everywhere, from New York to Nairobi, to be on the right side of this new digital divide. But the first digital divide is still with us. Every student needs to have a device. But listen, the solution to the first digital divide is not an analog classroom. The average North American school spends $200,000 a year on printing and photocopying. Now, CAMI users have so far annotated over 300 million documents online. Printing all these out would cost you over half a billion dollars, but it would also result in a stack of paper over a thousand kilometers high. That's twice the altitude of the International Space Station. It would also require the felling of 670,000 trees. The three million toner cartridges used up would each take a thousand years to break down in a landfill somewhere. And generating the electricity just to power the printers would produce CO2 emissions equivalent to 27,000 cars. I am using way less paper because I can push basically anything out through Kami and not have to make paper copies of it. Budgets are always a huge for us. We've got 17 schools in our district. We're paying $500 to $700 a month for maintenance stuff on, and that's not counting paper. And you know, I, I tell principals and anybody, teachers too, is that, you know, every dollar we spend on printing is a dollar I don't get to spend on kids. So there's no reason to buy a $5,000 interactive projector. I can pay a hundred bucks for Cami, a $300 Chromebook on my arm, and I have an interactive board from anywhere in the classroom. And finally, we need to prepare kids for a lifetime of learning. Whatever skills you possess today are being made obsolete faster and faster. Your kids can expect to change professions multiple times in their lifetime. A career will no longer follow a simple learn then work path. It has been said that learning is the new pension. The most critical role for educators will be to equip young people with the curiosity and the passion to be lifelong learners and to take ownership over their education. Here at CAMI, we don't just fit into this future vision for education, we're helping to make it a reality. At CAMI, we have a vision to connect learners and make education accessible to everyone both in the classroom and beyond. Our collaborative learning software can help to meet the needs of current and future students and educators as they move towards a more flexible future. With CAMI, every teaching resource you already use can be brought to life as an online canvas for expression or an interactive platform for insight and collaborative learning. Just remember CAMI, for anyone, any resource, any document, any medium, any device, anytime, anywhere. Engage, collaborate, learn.